Hey up lads and lasses, Dan Fai here, back again with some more Infinite Lagrange. Today you join me on the test server, as you can see in the top there. Content in the pilot server does not represent the final quality of the game. However, I believe most, and if not all of these uh, changes probably go through. Because uh, they did last time, I don't think they changed anything last time from what we tested. Um, which is generally fine, the changes are insane, like... Look, this is part B. Just look how many changes there are. And these are all additions, basically. There's very few things that are generally got changed. Um, almost all weapon systems have like a flat 5% increase that you can grab. Some have hit rate increases and UAV damage increases and all sorts of fun stuff. So... Instead of trying to go through literally every single ship in the game, because I'm going to have to do that at some point when I update the tier lists after a bit more testing, unfortunately, as you can see around me, not many people to really test with. So it's been a bit awkward there. Uh, I've flown at a couple of pirates and that sort of thing, uh, and it, that's about it. That's all I've managed to really get done testing-wise, which is a bit unfortunate, really. Um, the star system's kind of barren in comparison to last test server where i had loads of players around helping me test this one there doesn't seem like there's that many players that got in which is a little bit unfortunate for testing but um i could be wrong uh but so instead of that i just want to go through a couple of like the favorite ships that i use uh how that might affect and i'll go through how sort of the upgrade system sort of works so let's have a look at the solar whale um, and as you can see, it's got an absurd amount of hit points already. I'm missing a lot of tech points here, which would further increase it. You're probably nearing around 580,000 580, hit points, which is absurd to think about on a solar whale. Um, and then, yeah. So how the boss generally work for pretty much all carriers, actually all carriers, they all get this buff which has increased the damage of all aircraft to UAVs in hangar platforms by 5%. Your second buff can be variable. Generally, though, most of them have this one, which is uh, opens the adjustment ability of the system, which allows you to kind of like supercharge the mod itself. So here's the auxiliary attack radar, which that is affecting. And as you can see here, it's actually giving me a 35% hit rate buff to the aircraft in here. And that's because you can supercharge it as it were and increase it by a further 20 percent standard at five uh five out of five this is only a 15 percent increase with the um this sort of mod slot unlocked you can get an additional uh 20 percent which is absolutely it's it's nuts so that is one of the things that you can upgrade. All Pretty much all carriers have that. I mean, every single hangar's got something of this nature. There's another 5% increase on this hangar. The auxiliary radar on this hangar's also increased. Um, I'm wanting ship maintenance here, but if you actually have the Corvette hangar on here, you can increase that Corvette hangar. Um, the armor system. So this is where you get some extra sort of variety, as it were. Increased ship HP by 5% is on all ships, and all ships also have the kernel structure enhancement too. This allows you to increase the amount of HP on a mod further. So as you can see, we're normally at 14% with welding tech enhancement, but with the mod increase, we can go up to 24% HP. And on ships with high HP pools, like solar whales, uh, spears, all of those, you're going to see some big HP pools now, uh, which is kind of interesting because that will definitely slow down the game. Um, in terms of battles, most battles are normally done within about three, four minutes, uh, especially if it's swarm because aircraft are normally dead in two minutes and then they run away. So definitely some interesting changes uh, going on there. The weapons projectiles, pretty much all of these can be increased as well. We can increase the damage by 5% here. We get a lock-on radar enhancement in the system, which is this one. So it's an increase to the hit rate of the weapon system. And yeah, pretty much all have like pretty generic 5% uh, damage increases, 5% uh, 
hangar uh, aircraft damage increases. All of them all have that. Pretty much all of them can also pick up one of these. These are star system specific. Uh, I'm not entirely sure which star system off the top of my head is gonna get these, but it allows you to move them into uh, a different row. So in the case of the solar whale here, I've picked up uh, distant winds. This puts my solar whale, instead of into the mid, into the rear row. You can't see that unless you're in combat, because it still says engage in the middle. But if you go into combat, it'll go back to the uh, rear row and that's where it will fight from which is pretty good for a solar whale keeping that out of the mid row yeah you're losing a little bit of that mid row tank that the uh, whale's capable of but you can do some really nasty stuff in the back row um, for example Murty Pulse stick those all into your back row and all of a sudden you've got an absolutely devastating anti-aircraft ship in the back row and swarm that go oh I'm going to primary super caps yeah, they're not going to like trying to shoot your carriers in the back row when they're getting blasted by Mertes, as an, exam uh, as an example. Um, so yeah, quite a few little bits and pieces going on. You can also grab this when a ship is destroyed. The probability of triggering emergency evacuation increases by 10%. That's a 10% chance for it to go back to base instead of getting blown up, basically. Um, very valuable, in my opinion, especially on the larger ships. That is across uh, the board. Uh, on the armor systems as well, all all ships have access to this. This is star system specific. Energy energy damage resistance increased by five percent, and solar radiation damage received reduced by ninety percent. This means you can fly through the sun on those data servers pretty not entirely safely, but enough to maybe. Do some interesting plays where you're coming out and attacking uh, into the sun instead of just sitting there and hiding for half the server, basically, because uh, it gets pretty rampant later on. Some ships also have this. This is another star system specific. Ship structure values increased by 25%, but it's going to cost you 30% more resources uh, and time to produce. Sucks a little bit, especially on the time. And the cost, solar whales are expensive as an example, and now you're getting 30% more expensive. So, but that's how I've got this up to 550,000. And if I had more tech points, you could, I'm certain you can push this closer to 600,000 HP, which is crazy to think about realistically, because like I said, that's a hell of a HP pool to go through. So, We've got covered some of the generic ones. Uh, the upgrade system's pretty standard, really. Uh, have I got anything to upgrade here? No, not really. Area fire controls. So these are the spotter UAVs. These might be interesting to take and worth running. You can pick up um, rearmament acceleration on this one, which uh, I believe is just reduces the flight time and cooldown of aircraft and UAVs in the hangar. It's not bad. I've probably run that again, I ran out of tech points here. But this is an interesting one. When supporting a target, increase the target's hit rate by an additional 10%. Yeah. This thing's flying around with like... A, it's going to be quite an obnoxious hit rate buff to anything that it's buffing. Um, so, those support like tactical series and stuff like that, they actually might be worth running now. Uh, the torpedo system here, as you can see, it's got a buff to the rapid fire system. We got a 5%, that's the generic one. Rapid fire system is, you know, re reduces the primary weapon's firing duration and cooldown by 80% every 60 seconds for 25 seconds. What this did is it reduced this time here. Instead of, uh, I think, 10 seconds, it's gone up to 15 seconds. Uh, it gave it an extra 15 seconds buff. Yeah, so cooldown's normally 10 seconds. Oh, sorry, 25 seconds. And I think it's standard, it's 10 seconds. So you've increased it by another 15 seconds. So it's got the 80% cooldown by 15 seconds. This actually might make some strategies viable. Uh, there's definitely certain ones which got absurd buffs, which I'll show you now. So the IO anti-ship type B got one of the strategy buffs. And it's... It, it's ridiculous, honestly. 
It got an extra 20% evasion. Or is it 20 or 15% evasion? Either way, what it was at base, it's like 31 evasion with a ship max and this strategy knocking off. It goes up to 61% or 62% now with this because it got a massive evasion buff when you upgraded this uh, focused attack system, which, yeah, it's, it's crazy. This thing is kind of like the Carillion of Cruises and with the healing buffs and stuff like that, I think you're going to start seeing these anti-ship types on the front row, which will then uh, reduce its effectiveness because, uh, you know, this only triggers against frigates and destroyers. So, you're going to have to watch out for that a little bit. Again, tactical predators. We've got hangar uh, buffs again, so damaged, uh, yeah, more attack and hit rates. Hit rate 35% on one mod slot. It, it's absurd. And obviously, you know, 5% buff. We've got the 10% buff here. How these work, by the way, is you literally just spend the old um, sort of weapon tech upgrades to, to grab them. It's, uh, that's it. Now my tactical UAVs here are given a 10% buff. Well, 10% extra uh, hit rate, which is crazy. Uh, the, 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 these are going to be absurd. Like, absolutely absurd. This one, uh, the prioritized support strategy was what increased here, and it increased the duration of the support, which is, again, ridiculous. This is going to be um, a little bit more awkward to run because, again, this is a cruiser, but the Predator is a cruiser, which means it might buff itself, and it's going to buff itself for 45% longer, which sucks. But, you know, in the, the help that it might buff my IO anti-ships, but sure, why not? I'll take it any day of the week. A little change that happens, and this isn't in the server, but it's general thing. The cannon type on the, uh, I believe it's the cannon and the armored version of the Aris, they both got a damage buff. This happened before uh, this. These changes, are, and but and I believe this is actually in the game. It's not just in. Um, the test server so i've been asked this a few times what do i think of it it does make the the eris more viable for certain but you're never going to run it over the heavy cannon eris it's just that simple yes it's for, it's a great change it's um, an overall dpm increase it reduced the cooldown of the weapon but it increased the alpha which was needed because the armor is getting kind of silly now uh you know Crews are running around with 80 armor, even at 100 damage, that's still, you know, only going to get 20 damage through. Yes, um, you could say you could add the 30% buff and stuff like that, but you can't do 30% buffs now. I mean, in the case of this ship, you get the focus cannon fire ability, which is going to reduce your cooldown on it. So you're not increasing the alpha by the extra 5% in whatever mods you're going to get in here. It does put more value on picking up the all cannon damage uh, now on certain ships as opposed to running cooldown on them uh so do be aware of that heavy cannon type again you know we got this one was the other ridiculous one so the full firepower this got a strategy change uh with the mod reduces aiming time to increase firing speed reduces cooldown by 40 percent and you get a hit rate knock of 15% the standard. That means it's 15% less chance to hit, but you get a 40% uh, cooldown on your weapon system, which means, you know, generally you're going to be hitting things more often because you've got more shots out with a reduced hit rate. So it was fine to take before. The buff reduces the hit rate debuff on this ship to 3% which basically means you're getting a 40% cooldown bonus on the ship for absolutely no drawback. The, this thing is going to hit really damn hard now. It hits hard before. With this change, it's, it's ridiculous. It's absurd. This is the highest damaging destroyer in the game by a long way now, pretty much. Um... Yeah, I literally, I don't think even like Assault Tauruses can like keep up with the damage output that potentially has with the, you know, you just take more hit, you take all the hit rate boss, now we're in positive hit rate, you can take some tactical predators or something of that variety, 
and now you you know you're buffing the hit rate even further of these uh it's it's going to be absolutely sickening wing to sar nothing really changed here of any like no it got a massive hit crit uh additional hit crit damage buff uh, so we're now hitting 175 percent crit damage when attacking aircraft obviously you know with the command system you get an extra 10 percent chance to deal 160 percent additional damage uh it's it's still like the be all end all of the uh sort of anti uh ships but what's really interesting about this when i was thinking of like a bit of fleet design and that kind of thing and how you would use these for the most part, the Corvettes and fighters, by the way, generally the buffs weren't particularly interesting or, you know, amazing to do anything with. You know, we got barrel enhancement here, which increases the damage caused by an extra, I think it was about 15% there. And then we got another 5%, the sort of generic ones. That's pretty much all they got. They didn't really get anything on command systems or propulsion. The armor systems, again, you got aircraft enhanced uh, armor, which is going to increase HP, and you got a flat 5% HP buff there as well. That's pretty much all of the uh, Corvettes and fighters. Almost all of them got the same. I was kind of hoping that they'd do something with a strategy here, but it was a lock on radar enhancement, uh, which I believe is there. It's the hit rate buff. So, you know, it's nice. They are nice changes on the, the Corvettes and stuff, but they're, they're not like incredible the marshall crux's buff is uh disgusting uh it's gonna increase the uh, no that's the it's the energy control system enhancement so you've got hit rate buff on something that generally hasn't got the best hit rate again the io the base ios have these as well where you're just increasing the base hit rate of these massive huge laser damage cannons um so yeah, definitely going to start seeing more Marshall Cruxes, and Marshall Cruxes are just good anyway. So yeah, really nasty ships. Uh, Thunderbolt changes. Um, I don't think I really can see much of what's going on here because I don't have many points in it. So we've got the energy control system enhancement. Uh, it's, it's even further increasing Yeah, the iron cannon hit rate, like I said. Any of these big iron cannons got hit rate buffs and generally going to be quite scary. CTG uh we got the energy control system enhancement again hit rate buffs obviously you got your five percent damages and stuff like that so yeah really really nasty so what this means is you do some pretty nasty like potential for like fleets where you do something similar to this now this is a, a fleet design i sort of thought about it works off the base design that i kind of run anyway where I have like a mixed front row of destroyer with Tauruses and Eruses that are, uh, you know, high evasion as they naturally are. Also high DPM. We have some Tundra aircraft destroyers in here. These carry my Mistrals in because they further buffed hit rate of Mistrals because why the hell not? Predators, uh, they're to buff my IOs. I've got IOs on the front line. These are the anti-ship variant with that massive evasion. 60-odd percent evasion now when they're fighting frigates and destroyers. So it's kind of like a cruiser-sized Carillion almost with a bigger gun. Um, so yeah, absolutely nasty. ST-59s, I've moved those permanently to the front row without taking the strategy. Uh, unfortunately, I've not been able to test if it will retreat to the mid row if it takes enough damage. Um, I, I, like I said, I've only been able to test against pirates, and no pirates has the capability to take an ST-59 on alone at the moment, let alone um, do anything about those. And then 10 wing to SARS. These have been moved to the back row, and the reason I moved them to the back row is because that's going to now cover the Tundra aircraft in the back row. It's also going to cover my Solar Whales, which I moved to the back row. So when I reinforce with five uh, Solar Whales into this fleet, they're going to be at the back row. And yeah, this is like a hell of a lot of damage. Something to note quick as well on the ST-59. Um, I am running the health mod on this thing. We're up to 300,000 HP. Yeah, the additional armor system giving us an extra 14%, 14%. It gives a flat 20%. And then the armor system, you get an extra 24% thanks to the mods, an extra 14%. Yeah, it's it's kind of nasty. 
in the specific system, you get an extra 25%. Plus, you know, all the tech points are got in here, also buffing it. We have the area fire control system for even more hit rate buffs. Assault torpedo system is, yeah, we've talked about the cooldown on there. Rail guns as well. Hit rates, and here we go. We got a 30% chance now to deal an additional 100% crit damage on the rail guns. These things are going to hit hard. Like, really damn hard. And yeah, all the, uh, all the accuracy buffs we can pick up. So yeah. So far, the changes look really interesting, really cool. Some standouts, like I've mentioned so far. Uh, the IOs change is really cool. The Solar Whales change uh, changes are just nasty because of how much HP it can get. Spears HP can get up to absurd levels as well. Eternal Storm's ability to hit things now is going to go up. So this might be a, cru uh, a battle cruiser to look into. Um, Callisto, I, I don't have... I do have the anti-ship type. Why do I have the anti-ship type in here and I don't normally? Uh, yeah, the 1600 uh, hit damage. And you know this lovely, you know, when the enemy fleet includes battle cruise, it prioritizes attacks on these targets, increases damage by 25%. Uh, should I show you what that can actually do? So this is how you upgrade and stuff like that. I'll just do this quickly. Uh, so yeah, now we've unlocked the ability to upgrade this. We'll use consecutive adjustments because I'll be quick here. Uh, this allows you to just rapidly max it out as fast as you bloody can. Well, you just throw stuff at it. We've got three levels there. Uh, let's grab some more. Uh, probably, yeah, like 30, 38, that'll do. Should get us to max it. Not quite. Uh, a little bit more. So we just... We can do it the old-fashioned way as well. We just, like... Spam confirm until upgrades. There you go. And then that's where you're getting that little extra number from now. 40%. It's going to increase its damage. It's going to prioritize battle cruisers. And it's going to hit 40% extra damage. 40% of... Why did that go up to 1,840? Is that calculating? That shouldn't be calculating 40%, should it? There's an extra 5%. It, it's going to hit bloody hard. Like, I don't have the the tech points in the Callisto because I don't have the Type B, so I can't run it. So I don't know why you can see it now in here, uh, which is odd. Unless you can just gifted all ships or something like that. I tell you what, we can check this because the Caso 6, I don't have the support type. I don't have the support type. Why do I have the Callisto B type? I don't I don't even have like a percentage of I must have a percent then. I don't know when I got it, but apparently I got it. Uh so yeah. It's gonna be really bloody nasty. The Callisto is going to be in most fleets, especially now battle cruisers are definitely way more viable. The hit rate buffs on the battle cruisers alone are way more vi make them way more viable. Let alone the massive HP buffs that you can get on them. And then on top of that, being able to like purposely move them into rows when you're in the specific systems is going to be nasty. Anyway, that is a very long rambly video. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, I'm going to have to stop it there, but. Uh, I will eventually have to go through, probably redo all of the ships one by one again, the ship guide videos, so uh, keep an eye out for that once these go live and I get a bit more testing done. And then I will also have to update the ranking systems probably completely from scratch again because some of these changes are massive. Like the anti-ship IO is it's nasty like really nasty okay it's a little bit specialized because it's only anti-frig anti-destroyer but it's still really nasty so thank you guys for watching don't forget to like comment and subscribe and i'll catch you next time